the Dallas Stars closed out their five-game road trip with a 2-1 to win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. And on today's episode, we'll take a deep dive into this game, talk about why it's so important that the Stars were able to win, even if the opponent was not necessarily the best that the league had to offer. Here's some post-game thoughts from Coach Pete DeBoer. Talk about Wyatt Johnston, Riley Tufty, some of the youngsters making an impact on the team. And then we'll close out the episode with a quick prospect roundup. Give you a chance to gain some insight on some of the future players for this Dallas Stars team. You can impress your friends with some knowledge of some need-to-know Dallas Stars prospects. All of that coming up on this Tuesday episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bing bong. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Tuesday, December 20th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener of the show, thank you for stopping by and for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Remember to subscribe if you're watching on the YouTube channel. You can also follow us on your favorite podcasting platform as well. We are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. And of course, the best way to support the show is to leave a comment if you're watching on YouTube. Let me know how you feel about the Stars' 2-1 to win over the Blue Jackets. Let me know your thoughts on the team getting 7 out of 10 points on this 5-game road trip. Thank you guys for the continued support, and let's jump into today's episode, starting off with a recap of last night's big win. And I say big win. I mean, it was only a one goal win in a relatively uneventful game. But when you look at this thing from the big picture perspective, the Stars had been on a really tough road trip grinding in all of these games. Some of the best teams in the league, some of the hottest teams in the league, some of the hottest players in the league, Alexander Ovechkin, uh, Sidney Crosby's been playing really well, pretty much the entire offense on the Carolina Hurricanes playing incredibly well this season. The New Jersey Devils at one point this season went on a 13-game win streak, one of the most difficult stretches of games that the Stars will face this season. And even though the Columbus Blue Jackets are certainly the least of the teams on this road trip, This was not going to be an easy game for the Stars, yet they come in and, again, through a relatively uneventful game, the Stars fought hard and found a way to get two points, Uh, and you really do have to be pleased with that result. This definitely kind of had the feel of a potential trap game of it's, uh, you know, the Stars clearly and far and away the better team, especially after the news comes out on Monday morning that Blue Jackets captain Boone Jenner would not be playing, placed on IR, down one of their best players and one of the team leaders. I mean, it's really have been no question that the Stars should win Monday night's game, and they leave no doubt. They, they get the 2-1 win. Maybe should have been a 2-0 win. We'll talk about that in just a second. But let's take a minute now and hear what Coach Pete DeBoer had to say about his team after the win. A tough game. Uh, you know, they... they uh... They're playing uh, with not a lot to lose, and their goalie was really good, uh, which allowed them to kind of hang around. And uh, I thought first period we were a little loose. I thought in the second and third we we tightened up defensively. Um, you know, just couldn't extend the lead to to really put them in a hole. So you got to give them credit for for hanging around to the end. Well, every time you, you win a game like this, you, you learn some things, and guys get put in situations. And I, I liked our patience. Uh, you know, that's a game where you can really uh, force it, trying to look for another goal and open up the other way. And they've got a few guys there with Line and Goodrow that can really make you pay. And I thought we did a good job. We were patient and, and didn't uh, overextend ourselves looking for the second goal. It's a great trip. I mean, you know, what, what a gauntlet of teams, uh, both not necessarily even standings, but just how, you know, four of those teams have been playing. I think four of the hottest teams in the league. Um, so, uh, you know, really, really proud of our group. I think coming into the trip, 
you know, I probably would have been happy with 500 to come out 3-1-1 uh, one and one is, a, is a great trip this time of year. A really great game from the Stars all around, despite what the scoreboard might say, and that extends, of course, to the net, as Jake Ottinger had one of his best performances of the season, really should have had the shutout uh, outside of a last-second goal from rookie Kent Johnson. Uh, Ottinger saves 27 of 28 shots. Both goalies having a fantastic night, just putting on a clinic on goaltending in Monday night's contest. Daniil Tarasov saving 32 of 33 shots. Jake Ottinger, in my opinion, deserved the shutout in this game, but still had a really nice night and overall had a really great road trip in the games that he did play. And if you're the stars, if you're the team in general, you feel great after this trip. Again, one of the toughest stretches of the season. I mean, a lot of teams, a lot of lesser teams would have gone on this road trip and maybe gotten five points at most, maybe struggled against some of these teams, not having maybe their best performances against these teams, and maybe, you know, taking several steps back instead of continuing to move forward as the season continues to go on. And as we start to slowly approach the halfway point of this season. We knew we were going to learn a lot about this team on this trip, and a lot of what we learned falls under the positive category. If you ask me, the Stars obviously did not win each of these games, but I think the most important thing here is that they were competitive in every game that they played. The losses were not blowouts. They were not games that slipped away from the Stars. They were games that were tightly contested and against quality opponents. And if you really think about it, the Stars were about 30 seconds away from getting maybe eight or even nine points on this road trip. You think back to a week ago, the Stars in Pittsburgh against the Penguins last Monday night, a game tied at one seemed destined to go to overtime uh, until Evgeny Malkin plays hero and scores with about 34 seconds left in that game. Depending on how things go in overtime or shootout, the Stars potentially get two points there. And of course, the game in Carolina on Saturday night goes into overtime. Maybe things go a little bit differently in that extra period. And maybe the Stars, I, I mean, they, they very well could have gotten 10 points on this trip, but you still do have to be pleased and satisfied with seven. I mean, that's a very good percentage, very good number for this team, especially given the competition that they were up against over the past week. Uh, and I think that this is another mark, another step in a long journey of proving that this Stars team is not just a flash in the pan or a team that started off the season hot. They continue to prove again and again that they are a legitimate threat in the Western Conference. The statement has been made before, and it is continuing to be made, that this team is officially a contender and seemingly a team that is going to make the postseason unless something drastic happens. And of course, the season isn't over. This isn't to say that the stars are going to coast from here and that things are going to be easy. But if the stars are one, able to stay healthy and two, able to continue this style of play consistently, I think that this team has a very good chance to not only make it to the postseason, but make quite a bit of noise. Once they get there, it's not always, like I said, going to be easy. There are still going to be bad games every now and again. You're going to have a team that maybe doesn't always perform as well. But if this five game road trip was any indication, this team can certainly string together some really solid performances. Uh, and I think that if anything, this trip just built more and more of the belief in that locker room. This team is playing incredibly well. They play well together. They play hard for one another. And not every team can say that. And you know, I think the Stars truly do have something special with their leadership group and also with Coach Pete DeBoer, who has come in and just done what he's done his entire coaching career, which is come into a new city, come into a new locker room with a new team, and have a really great start to his tenure with that team. And if the Stars continue to do what they've been doing, uh, I can s foresee a, a pretty nice ending for this team and, and an ending that is deep into the postseason. And so you have to be pleased with the win on Monday night, have to be pleased overall with the road trip. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we will talk about a few players on this team that impressed on Monday night. We'll talk about some of the young players, Wyatt Johnston, and we'll talk a little bit about Riley Tufty, who made his season debut with the Stars as well, right after this. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. 
Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From pro to college football, bowl season to basketball and NHL, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, which if you're listening to this one, you probably do, you can even find those at Bet Online as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. I want to thank you again for making Lockdown Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe and follow the show on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. Thank you guys for the continued support. And speaking of support, you can't talk about the secondary scoring for the Stars this season without mentioning rookie Wyatt Johnston, who scored a timely goal in this game early in the second period after a scoreless first frame for the Stars and Blue Jackets. Both goalies putting on an absolute clinic in the crease. Wyatt Johnston comes out off of a, a shot from Ryan Suter and gets the rebound, redirection, whatever you want to call it, past Tarasov to give the Stars a one-goal lead that they would ride late into the third period. Big play from Johnston, and of course a big play from Ryan Suter as well. Had a little bit of space, knew that that shot probably wasn't going to go in from that far away with how Tarasov had been playing, but there was a little bit of space around the crease as well, and at that point with goalies playing well, maybe sometimes the best thing to do is to chunk the puck at the net and hope one of your teammates can make a play if it falls in front of them, and that's exactly what Wyatt Johnston did. So good play all around. Jamie Benn picks up an assist on the play as well. But focusing in a little bit on Johnston, he continues to play at an incredibly high level despite only being 19 years old. And Coach DeBoer was complimentary of him after this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he get, just gets better every night, and uh, he's getting more comfortable. He's making more plays. Um, you know, I'm giving him more responsibilities, taking draws in our own end. I think he can kill penalties. I think that's something we can probably add to to his uh, another layer to his game as we go forward here. So, just a a pleasure to coach. In a season where there has been uncertainty on the bottom nine and a lot of shuffling and moving around and trying to fit certain pieces all over the roster, Wyatt has come in and has been a very steady producer, a very solid piece of this roster. And while other players may get moved around, he and Jamie Benn seem inseparable at this moment. And I've really liked what Ty Delandria has been able to do with those two as well. But Delandria having to be moved around for the sake of some of the other players on the roster, it seems, and not necessarily for a lack of what he's able to do with Johnston and Ben. But Johnston in particular is continuing to impress. And of course, there were several questions, not necessarily concerns, but people just curious to see if the highest scorer in the OHL from last season could translate his game and be an efficient player at the NHL level. And so far, he's done just that. Obviously, he's not lighting up the scoreboard like he was with the Windsor Spitfires, but for his age and what the expectations are for him on this roster surrounded by a plethora of veteran talent. You really have to be pleased with what you've seen from him so far this season. I mean, it seems like he's fit in very well into the locker room and plays with a ton of confidence despite being one of the youngest guys in the league and the youngest player in this Stars locker room. And I'm sure that that just comes naturally when you play alongside other guys that have confidence ranging from the other young players on the team, whether it's Haskinen, Robertson, Hintz, or even some of the older guys who are playing with confidence too in Jamie Benn, Joe Pavelski, uh, Essa Lindell, even uh, just a locker room that believes in one another, like we talked about in the last segment. I think that goes down to an individual level, and we can see that when guys like Wyatt Johnston play at, at an efficient pace and, you know, continuing to score goals, which is what he does best, and just continuing to make big plays and being at the right place at the right time. So really good stuff from Johnston and his goal ended up being even more valuable last night than I think many of us realized when he initially scored the, the aforementioned goal on Tarasov as it really kind of felt was not obviously the only one in the game, but the only one against a netminder uh, for the Stars until Jason Robertson's eventual empty net goal. So a big moment in that game. And then props to the Dallas defense and for Jake Ottinger for holding onto that lead and giving Wyatt uh, the big goal in this matchup. And it wasn't just Wyatt Johnston who made an appearance. He's played in just about every game this season, actually every game this season for the Stars 
uh, about a third of the way through the campaign, but we also saw the season debut of Riley Tufty, who was playing in only his 11th career NHL game, skated just over 12 minutes, played on that fourth line with Roddick Foxa and Luke Glendinning, and had a, had a pretty decent performance, generated two scoring chances, one of them high danger, a scoring chance there, kind of trying to get a wraparound tuck goal on Tarasov early in the game, a nice moment, and, and some nice sequences for that line, nothing spectacular, uh, maybe the least, of, least efficient line in Monday night's game as far as goals expected and scoring chances, but still a nice moment here or there. But overall, I think that he, you know, if he finds time on this roster long term, which I don't necessarily think he will this season. He's a guy that you very much can plug into that fourth line and he'll fit in pretty well uh, as far as size and physicality with Luke and Roddick, who are some of the bigger guys on the team known as guys that are going to be on a checking line for the stars. And Riley Tufty certainly fits that bill coming in at six, six feet, six inches tall and 230 pounds, according to NHL.com, not lacking in size at all, can definitely throw his weight around a little bit and finish some checks along the board, but also has a little bit of speed, certainly not the flashiest part of his game, but can move pretty well for a guy his size. I'm not entirely sure how much we are going to continue to see Tufty with the team this season. He traveled with the team for the entirety of this road trip and only got to play on Monday night in Columbus. Stars doing that just to have a little bit of depth on the roster for a long time away from home. Not sure how much longer he'll be around as the Stars might send him back to the AHL where he can get a ton more playing time and continue to develop his game. But he's a nice player and, and a really nice piece for the Stars organization to have in their back pocket if the Stars find themselves in a pinch. Thankfully, uh, we see him in this game uh, with Dennis Gurionov being a healthy scratch. Not necessarily great that we're seeing Dennis Gurionov be a healthy scratch yet again, like we saw several times last season. But if Tufty is going to get playing time, at least it is for something like that and not for an injury or a guy that actually cannot play physically uh, or for whatever other reasons as well. But nice to know that you have a guy like Tufty who has a small handful of games of NHL experience, but also has a good mixture of size, speed. And of course, we saw a little bit of that scoring ability last season in Minnesota, but a nice performance from Tufty. Nothing major, nothing noteworthy, but a nice piece in the Stars organization. Certainly an underrated prospect that is a member of the Texas Stars. I'm sure that he'll be back down there soon producing for them, and the Stars can maybe go back to having a little bit of a lighter roster for the next few games at home. Well, we're going to take one more quick break, but when we come back, we will actually take a deep dive into the world of Dallas Stars prospects. Again, give you an opportunity to gain a little bit of knowledge and insight that you can impress other Stars fans with, impress your friends with. And when some of these guys make it big on the Stars roster, you can say, hey, I've known about this guy. He did X, Y, and Z back with this team uh, and was one of the best players in this respective Canadian Hockey League. More on that right after this. Closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars. Moving on from Monday night's game, a win over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Been a little bit since we've talked about some of the prospects on this team. Wanted to take some time to check in and see how some of our developing players are doing. Just kind of want to go through a list of some noteworthy players. A lot of them playing with junior clubs up in the Canadian Hockey League. A few of them playing it at the AHL level with the Texas Stars. And even a guy who is recently made his debut in the ECHL with the Idaho Steelheads. But not a ton of time to waste. Let's jump right into it. you got to start with, of course, Logan Stankoven, maybe the most noteworthy Dallas Stars prospect at the moment, getting ready to play with Team Canada in the World Juniors. He actually just recently was named an alternate captain of the team along guy, alongside guys like Shane Wright. So certainly in good company up there at World Juniors, which will get started here in just the next week or so after Boxing Day. And with the Kamloops Blazers, he has been nothing short of spectacular with 17 goals, 27 assists, 44 points in total, and only 21 games played with the Blazers so far, living up to the hype and basically delivering on what he did last season as well. Stankoven was a hot commodity uh, in, during training camp and the preseason for the Stars. A lot of people wanted him to crack the roster, but of course we know the Blazers hosting the Memorial Cup this season uh, in Kamloops and, and not really a spot for Logan on the Stars roster just given the other personnel that was available, but if he continues to play incredibly well this season, 
in the WHL and has, again, a nice training camp and nice preseason with the Stars. Next year, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we can see Logan Stankoven in victory green as soon as next season. And right next to him on the same team in Kamloops is Matthew Simonoff, who was drafted by the Stars in round six earlier this year, back in June during the 2022 NHL draft. And he's currently third on the team in Kamloops in team scoring, 32 points in 28 games played, 12 goals, 20 assists. And this is a guy that myself and a few others talked about as well, even did a few episodes, uh, you know, reviewing and evaluating the Stars draft. And this could really be a guy that sneaks up on some people. He can score goals. He can play make a really smart player and a guy that seems to have just flown incredibly low under the radar uh, for a lot of teams around the league. As again, he was taken in the sixth round by the Stars this summer. But Logan Stankoven and many others have been highly, uh, you know, they, they compliment his game a ton uh, when they talk about him. And clearly uh, he is an excellent player for the Kamloops Blazers this season. And, and I mean, he's a guy that at the worst, he was a six round pick if things don't necessarily pan out or there's potential that you could always trade guys like this. I don't know how much that's in the cards for this Dallas organization, but a six round pick, who knows what, what he can do. If he can, can find a way to translate his game with the Blazers to the NHL, I think the stars could have a really solid player on their hands. Matthew Simonoff, remember that name. It might not be the easiest to remember because he was not the biggest name taken in the draft this summer, but a guy that could certainly sneak up on some people, not just in the Stars organization, but potentially around the NHL. And sticking with the 2022 NHL draft, got to highlight Christian Cairo, who has recently been traded by the Erie Otters to the Sarnia Sting. And Cairo, having a very nice season, has 39 points, 10 goals, 29 assists. In 29 games played across the Ontario Hockey League this season, both with Erie and Sarnia. Only, I believe, two games played with the Sting so far up to this point. And a guy who is looking to be, at this point, a potential steal out of the second round for the Stars. I mean, of course, we know that we're starting to slowly build up a nice defensive core of some young players like Miro Haskinen and Niels Lundqvist, but maybe in a season or two, we could see Christian Kairou get thrown into the fold as well. He's not the biggest guy, and he still needs to work a little bit on his actual defensive game, but in terms of offense and scoring ability and playmaking ability, he really can do just about anything any team would want. And so he's definitely a guy worth keeping an eye on. I know a lot of Stars fans are already knowledgeable of him because Kairou is a pretty recognizable name, brother of St. Louis Blues forward Jordan Kairou, uh, coming from a hockey family, living up to the hype so far, and looks like another great pickup for the Stars past the first round in a draft. And moving on to another OHL team, another OHL player, Francesco R. Curry, who also, like uh, Kairou, has recently been traded from the Kingston Frontenacs to the Kitchener Rangers. He is currently tied for the OHL lead in goals this season with a few other players. He has 24 on the season. And this is another potential diamond in the rough kind of player, another sixth round pick, but our Curry picked up in the 2021 draft by the Dallas Stars. And you might have seen his name circulating on Twitter a little bit. There's a few people that one cover the stars and just cover prospects in general, referring to our Curry as Jason Robertson Jr., which is music to just about anyone's ears, including my own. Jason Robertson, far and away one of the best players in the NHL this season, one of the best goal scorers in the league at this point, and that is exactly what our Curry does, and that's the reason that he is currently tied for the OHL lead in goals at 24. Jason Robertson also sitting at that number as well. Really exciting stuff. Again, the Stars just continuing to find ways to seemingly find fantastic talent near the end of drafts. And now we'll shift our attention to the American Hockey League and talk about a couple players there. I know a lot of people are curious on the development of Maverick Bork, who was the first round pick for the Stars in the 2020 draft. And he's doing okay. He has four goals and seven assists through 11 or 11 points in total through 26 games this season. Not necessarily the flashiest numbers, nothing to really write home about, but still also plenty of time for him to keep developing. He's still incredibly young, uh, and I'm sure the adjustment from playing in the Canadian Hockey League to 
you know, moving up to maybe a little bit better competition in the AHL, certainly not the easiest adjustment to make. So no reason to overreact or worry about the performance of Maverick Bork. I imagine things will continue to work out just fine. And clearly, we know that the Stars have a pretty good track record with their draft picks. They obviously have seen the potential with Maverick Bork, and I'm sure it's just, you know, one of those things where some players take a little bit longer to reach their full potential than others. So certainly a player worth keeping an eye out for and a guy that I still think is worth getting excited about in the long run for the Stars organization. And there's plenty of other players to take note of on the Texas Stars roster. But one guy I wanted to highlight, a guy who I feel like some people may have forgotten, but maybe some maybe not so much, is Jacob Peterson, who was a member of the Dallas Stars for the majority of last season, but not really a spot for him on this year's roster due to some free agency acquisitions and just some other players performing well during training camp. But PD has six goals and eight assists in 20 games so far this season. And he's another one of those players like Riley Tufty, who it's nice to know that he's still around and we've seen what he can do at the NHL level. A nice player to have in your back pocket if you are Coach Pete DeBoer and you find yourself in a pinch and in need of a solid NHL caliber forward who can play somewhere in the middle six. And then the last guy I want to talk about is Antonio Stranges, who at times has gone viral on Dallas Stars Twitter with some incredible plays back when he was playing with the London Knights. He was an absolute standout with that team, and he's been a member of the Texas Stars to start this year, played five games for the team, got two assists, but was recently sent down to the ECHL Idaho Steelheads, who are the another affiliate team of the Dallas Stars. He scored twice in his debut there, but I know a lot of people were not necessarily excited or optimistic to hear the news of Strong just being sent down to Idaho. But again, sometimes it takes a little bit for a player's game to translate quickly from the Canadian Hockey League to professional hockey, either in the AHL, NHL, and sometimes even the ECHL. I don't think that this is necessarily the end of the line for Stranges, just maybe taking a little bit of a different path than some other players. Good to see that he scored twice in his debut with the team, and we'll have to keep an eye on him in Idaho with the Steelheads and see how he continues to develop because the potential is absolutely there incredible player, uh, seemingly with incredible upside, just might take a little bit longer for it to come out and fully show itself. And these are just a few of the prospects in the Stars organization. There's several players that I did not even get to touch on, plenty of other players to get excited about that could be nice pieces to add if the Stars find themselves with a few injuries or if the Stars you know, continue to build the team like they're building right now. Some guys that we could see be consistent pieces on this roster in the future. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube and the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. Leave us a five-star rating and review if you enjoy the show and like what you hear. Be sure to find us on social media as well at Locked on Stars on both Twitter and Instagram. And you can also find me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. We'll be back here tomorrow with a game day preview of the Stars matchup against the Edmonton Oilers, the second meeting of the season between those two teams, and a late puck drop in that game, 8.30 Central Time on uh, TNT, not ESPN, but they are getting a national TV game against Connor McDavid and the Oilers. McDavid versus Robertson. What more could you ask for on a Wednesday night? We'll be giving you the game preview and keys to the game on tomorrow's episode. And I can't wait to see you there.